Alright, well, welcome back everyone. I'm uh, just wanting to show you where I'm going with uh, with this whole, uh, well, with this whole thing. <laughs> with all this uh, code and everything, uh, what, I'm going, what I'm actually doing is I'm working on a piece that is actually relatively important. It's, uh, well, it's kind of the heart of the whole thing, and if we don't have it, well, none of it's going to work. And that's basically the web server. Um, what I'm doing right now, or what I have what I have done, I should say, right now, and uh, again, you can find, you'll be able to find all this on the uh, Junkbotics GitHub. Um, is I've created a, I guess, a little bit of test code. Um, it's in the tests. It's called the Ping Pong Async Web Server um, Test uh, .ino, and it also has a couple of extra pieces um, for for a couple web pages. And it's actually an all-in-one inclusive test. So, I'm just going to show you what this is all about. What we have here is we have initially this, uh, we have our two pages. We have an index.html right here, and we have this, which is the 404 error page. Um, and this will become apparent uh, shortly, and I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. <laughs> Famous last words. Anyhow. In this page, we uh, we set up we set up uh, this uh, particular meta um, tag here in order to essentially default everything to the device's width. And this is because for whenever you're on a uh, whenever you're on a on a mobile phone or tablet or whatnot, if you don't do that, things get all shrunk down. It looks ugly. Uh, we resize the button here with some CSS, and then we uh, have some scripting here. We have a couple of functions, one called ping and one called pong. And uh, then we have uh, this little bit of, of uh, HTML here that basically sets up the, I don't know, you call it the application or the, uh, the screen that, that you interact with. Um, got a little title here, and then we have a response, and we have a count. And then we have two buttons, one that calls the uh, one that calls the uh, ping function, and the other that calls the pong function, and they're handily labeled ping and pong with exclamation points. That's important. This, uh, these, whenever these are called, what happens is we'll just take they're both identical, ping and pong. Well, almost identical. One counts up and the other counts down. That's all you really have to worry about. Whenever, whenever they're called, what happens is um, we create a we create a new AJAX request here. Create an AJAX request, and then uh, we set up a uh, we set up this uh, on ready uh, state state change callback um, that uh, is just basically sitting here waiting for something to essentially come back. And then we then we increment the counter, check it, make sure it, you know basically limit check it. And then we display in the count element down here, this uh, this element right here in the span. We change, we update the counter, so we show the counter in there. And then we call with AJAX. We call the server, and we call the page or the path or whatever you want to call it, the endpoint ping. And we do we do a GET request, and we pass in the counter and um, then we send it and what happens is, is that goes that goes to the server that's running on the ESP32 server does some processing and then it sends back a message which triggers the on state ready change or ready on ready state change sorry about that and if we got a, a 200 okay which we should we better then it updates the message uh, HTML with what is coming back from the server and uh, that happens down in here this uh, section right here so it updates the response so we have this kind of two-way communication going we press a button send something to the server server does something with it sends back a response we display the response that's what this page does um, 
And like I said, ping counts up, pong counts down. And that's all it does. Real, real, real basic stuff. 404 page, even more basic, not really much to it. Just uh, displays that a request handler cannot be found. And this happens, this is there just in case. It doesn't really necessarily need to be there, but it's, it's a good practice. So that if, a, a, if an endpoint is referenced that doesn't exist, there's at least uh, something that it can come back and tell the, you know, basically display to the, to the user that, uh, hey, something has gone terribly wrong here. So we get into the actual meat of the, or the actual server, the ping pong async web server test.ino. And this is what we have. We uh, do a couple includes for our libraries that we need, the, uh, the Wi-Fi library um, from Espressif and uh, the ESPA sync web server library that uh, I can't remember who creates it, but there's a link uh, to it on, on the GitHub, so you can, uh, you can check that out. Then we uh, then we include our, our two pages here. These are these are stored in program memory. Uh, I'll just go back here and show you stored in program memory. Um, I was thinking about actually using a file system and uh, basically decided against doing that um, because this these don't change much. Well, they don't change at all, and uh, they probably won't get changed much. And this works actually relatively well. There's no need for the additional code space that'd be used by the file system. We're not storing anything on the file system right now, anyhow. And uh, there's just no need for any of that. So rather than complicating things, I'm going to make this as simple as possible. We uh, set our built-in LED because we're not using the common uh, thing that we uh, the common library because this is just for testing. And we set our um, asynchronous web server port to 8080. We could leave it. We we could actually set it to 80. Uh, we we you know the standard uh, the standard. Um, port for uh, serving a web page, but uh, this gives it, you know, I don't know, just makes it, uh, gives it a little bit more, I guess, definition as this isn't a regular web page type thing. Um, and here we, we, we have, we have a, a variable called uh, the count, and uh, unfortunately, you know, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't Sesame Street, but uh, but it is, uh, it is, it is a, it is a variable that's holding our count that uh, is actually coming from the web page. Now, what happens here is we have we have our SSID and our password for for our wi Wi-Fi. We're actually setting up what's called uh, we're using what's called the soft AP or the access point uh, thing. What this does is it'll set the phone up you know it'll basically not the phone it'll set the web, the server the server on the ESP32 up um, to be a, to be an access point and then you connect to it with your phone you connect to it and then you can go on your on your you can go on your uh, your web browser and browse over to, over to your IP address which is helpfully defined right here 192.168.1.100 port 8080 you go to it and it will bring up the web page so we start by setting up the uh, server here with the with our port 8080 and uh, then I'll scroll down here because <laughs> um, because uh, our because our main stuff is down here in the bottom we uh, we we you know just like you know it's Arduino we run setup and then loop. Setup, we set the PID mode of that built-in LED because that's going to be useful here in a second. We set the uh, Wi-Fi um, AP, um, set the SSID and the password for it. And then we uh, do a couple of handlers here. Uh, we, have, we have two events that will happen from the, uh, from the soft AP. Um, first is whenever that soft AP actually starts. We don't want to do anything until it fully starts. Otherwise, well, when I was doing this, it was causing problems. It was random. I was trying some weird, doing some delays and other stuff, and I came across this as to this is how you should do it, and this uh, this 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 works a lot better. Then we have an an event here that's uh, for 
that's basically fires whenever what's called a station connects to the access point. And what a station is, is essentially anything that connects to the access point. Your browser, something random decides, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, if you had something else that could potentially connect, it's going to fire this off. It, it doesn't know anything different. Um, hopefully the only thing that will connect to it will be your web browser on your phone. Then we uh, set up our set up our serial port. Can output it, you know, if we had it hooked up to had it hooked up to um, the uh, virtual uh, virtual uh, serial port um, and monitoring it. But then we set the count to ten. And this will become again this will become apparent here real quick. We go into our loop, and we're here. We have a simple blink without delay uh, construct uh, monitoring Millis and looking for 100 times the count. Now, what happens is, is this comes in, excuse me, this comes in and it sets the count to 10. 10 times 100, 1,000 milliseconds, and so every second it'll blink on then off. We just do a simple monitor, you know, we have this thing called LED state. We start off it with uh, the LED off, built-in LED off and we just blink it on off on off once a second then what happens is, is since we set this the on Wi-Fi AP start event handler is called because hopefully <laughs> the Wi-Fi AP has started and that happens up here so it starts this and here's where it sets the config. Now, if we hadn't done this, it's possible that this thing could have uh, started. Uh, this thing could have gotten here if we just did it without doing that, uh, without doing that event handler and waiting for it. It could try to set this up, and it goes all wonky and it doesn't work right. So here we set up the local a the local IP, the the IP that we have set up here, the gateway and the subnet. We pass those to the configuration for the uh, for the uh, access point, and then we then we print out a message to the user so the user knows something. And then whenever that happens, it's just sitting there waiting for us. We go into our browser, do 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 do, and we connect up to the access point. And what happens then is this gets fired off here. This uh, this gets called by that other event. And it prints out some more helpful message to the serial port. And then it attaches uh, the URL request handlers. Here we have the ping, and then the pong, and then this one up here is the one for the main, for the main page, what gets displayed, the, the index HTML page. Um, so these are the handlers that get called whenever any of either one of these three get accessed. And then we have this one here, this on not found. This is for anything else. Anything else that it, it doesn't have one of these. It, if it isn't one of these, then it calls this on not found handler. Then we start our server. We wait for a little bit. And once we have everything, it's all ready to go. Strangely enough, I wasn't able to find anything that says wait until this actually is completely started. I don't know why. Um, maybe I just missed it. But waiting for a second seems to be good enough. We print out the information here on the serial port that says, okay, which do you, you know, connect up to the SSID that's printed here, whatever you had set it up to. Print out the, the, the IP address that we set, the 192.168 address. And, brow and it basically says, and browse to that with the port and, uh, you know, basically tells you where to go. And then immediately at, at the end of that, we set the count to five. Now remember that was times 100. So now it's every half second. So rather than blink going blink, 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 it's going blink, 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 meaning, okay, now we are connected. And, you know, basically first it was like, okay, we're just, we're not doing anything. We're just sitting here. Now we're connected, and now we're just waiting for the user to access the web page. And whenever they do that, the on-index request 
gets called. And that happens down here. On index request, it sends a, a you know basically a a, a um, request a pointer to this access server or this async server request, prints out some stuff to the serial port, and then it basically calls this special function, which is for program memory, where 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 the page is stored, in order to take that data and pull it out of there, send it with a 200 as text HTML, which gets rendered on the browser. When it gets rendered on the browser, then all that other stuff, you know, starts. You know, what a, you know, clicking on the buttons or whatnot, it basically displays and, and it's waiting there. Now it's still sitting at five, 500 milliseconds, every half second blinking. Whenever you click one of those ping or pong buttons, then it's gonna call one of these. And what these does is, what this does is it basically grabs the count that is being passed, remember, Back here in index in the index HTML, we are passing the counter right here. If I can <laughs> do it, we're passing the counter. So it passes that count and it reads it, reads reads the argument, and it converts it to an integer. And then it prints it out to the serial port to show that it actually has it. And then it calls, it basically sends back to the web page, the Ajax response, it sends back just this here, this ping or this pong with a 200. And okay, you know, basically it's got good stuff. And that fires this in the in each function, which then prints out that message inside of here. And that's basically what that's basically what it does and but each time this this happens, notice it's updating the count. So you click it the first time. In here it is initially set to zero. Counter is set to zero. And then you click it. Let's say you click ping as you probably have to because it's zero right now it updates it it goes to one and then it sends that back to the server and the server says oh one times a hundred now it's every tenth of a second so blink 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 fast keep pressing that ping button it goes up and up and it slows down until you get to 10 which is a max and then it's every one second you can click Pong to decrease it, and it'll get faster until it gets back down to 100 milliseconds. And that's basically it. That's that's the that's the that's the flow right there. Now I know that might not you know that might sound kind of simple and simplistic, but you got to start somewhere. And it's easier to start with this than it is to do all the sensor handling and everything. But fortunately, that's not that difficult either. And uh, that's where I'm taking it to next is I'm going to convert this code and put it all into our into into the web server library that, I, that I'm going to build and um, basically get this thing more into less less as a test function and more as a server. So that's where I'm heading to now. And uh, what I want to do now is give you a demonstration of what this actually looks like on the on the board, on, 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 on the little test board here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I will set this right here and set this right here. And then we can tilt you guys down, see if you can see that. All right. I think you guys can, I think you can see that. Maybe, yeah, hopefully, well, We'll see what happens. I'm going to turn on the power here and powers up and there it is blinking once a second. So you can see what's happening there. Now I will take my phone, power it up, got it right here, and then we will connect to the ESP32. 
and uh, the way we will do that is uh, come over here and uh, go over to settings and uh, choosing the networks and we will connect up to my ping pong server default connect up to it connect and it connects and now you can see that it's flashing faster that every uh, every half second so we are now connected to that and we will connect up to or we'll go to the uh, ping pong test server refresh this and this is what this looks like if you can see that oh, might be a huh, I guess it might be a little backwards I'm not sure why that is but uh, yeah <laughs> imagine that uh, I'm not exactly sure I'm not exactly sure why that is showing up like that but maybe I can maybe I can flip that in post <laughs> so now I'm going to click the ping button. Now notice, now notice it's blinking faster and notice that it's increased by one and we've got our message here. And click ping again and see it slows down. Ping again, slows down a little bit more. We'll click pong. Speeds up a little bit, pong again, and now it's back to where it's at. So you can see that that basically demonstrates the whole you know what what actually is working here that we have this web server working and we have the uh, the buttons con the buttons and everything basically and the web server controlling the the blink rate of the LED so I'm gonna leave that aside here put this over here and uh, so you know that's uh, that's basically that's basically what we have, and uh, I'm just going to take that take that code and put it into the library and everything, and you know basically just continue to work. So, you know, like I said, this uh, all this all the code for this uh, test stuff is up on the uh, GitHub, and uh, there's some explanation, more explanation uh, about how it works and everything, and uh, you can just take a look at it and you know. See, see exactly how things are, you know, browse it in more detail and see how it goes. So, let me get, you know, I'm going to get on to the rest of this and just go from there. All you have to do is lay out, cut it out, chop it out, and throw it out. Just, just throw it away. Just throw it away. <laughs> oh yeah!